Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Dom and in today's video, I'm gonna be going through five common JavaScript mistakes I've witnessed over the years. But before jumping into the list, I am going to be including video links down below or in the top right corner of today's video uh, for every single topic covered because I have uh, done previous videos on these issues uh, in the past. So if you do want more detailed explanations on any of these mistakes, you can find that with those video links. Okay, let's get into the list. Okay, the first common mistake is gonna be trying to access DOM elements before the document has been parsed. All right, so let me show you a quick scenario here. I've got this H1 tag with an ID of title and let's say I want to update the page title dynamically uh, as the user is doing something on the page. So the first step would be to access this DOM element in JavaScript using something such as uh, gets element by ID or query selector, okay? So that process of accessing that DOM element is where this mistake can happen. So let me continue here. I'm going to include the, uh, a script tag at the top inside the head of my HTML. Then I would say main.js pointing to my external JavaScript file. If I go inside this JS file, I then want to uh, say something like const title equal to document.getElementById, then passing through here the title. Now if I was to console.log title, we would expect this to work, okay? It's very simple. I'm getting this element by ID of title and this title matches what is inside the HTML ID attribute right here. So we should expect it to work. Well, if I was to attempt to run this page, I'll refresh here, you can see we actually get null inside the console, okay? Now, this also means if I was to try and do something such as, you know, uh, title.text content equal to a new page title, so to change that title, right? If I refresh the page, we get an error like this, which is very common, cannot do something of null. Because of course, null isn't the DOM element, it's just null. This just means that when this line of code ran, to get the element, the document hasn't been fully interpreted by the browser yet, okay? Now, a quick fix for this, pro actually, the reason why this is happening is because the script is being ran inside the head, okay? So this runs, then the document is passed, right? So to fix this problem, there's a few solutions to it. The first solution, very common, is to move the script towards the end of the body. Now it's gonna read your title, then it's gonna run and it should be fine. Let's refresh the page. We can see it works fine. The title updates and of course it's in the console, okay? The second solution would be to put it back in the head, okay? Then use the defer attribute just like this this right here is probably, this is the preferred solution, right? So you should try and do this here. Defer just means, look, it's going to load the script asynchronously with the page and only execute the script once the document has been passed. If I save this back in the browser, it still works. So make sure to use the defer attribute when loading your external modules. Okay, this next common mistake uh, deals with the specifics around let versus const, uh, specifically when it comes to declaring uh, arrays and objects, okay? So I'm gonna declare a new array right up here called numbers equal to a new array, and I'll say three, seven, eight, and two as my numbers, all right? Now, you know, you'll see this quite often where someone uses let to declare an array because as we know, uh, let means we can change it once we have uh, assigned it. Now, this actually isn't the case, okay? Um, because let refers to reassignment and not necessarily changing what the value is. So I'm gonna show you how this works real quickly. Um, but if I was to drop down here, I'll now say numbers.push 
And I'll add the number four to this array. If I then console.log the numbers array, we're gonna expect four to appear here and it should. Let's go in the browser, do a quick refresh. And of course we get four added to the array. That works perfectly fine, but let me show you. If I make this const, save it back in the browser, refresh, it runs perfectly fine, all right? So there's a common misconception that you must use lets because you are changing the array when the actual reality is you are unable to reassign a variable using const. And reassignment refers to using the assignment, the equals, uh, you know, in doing that. So I can't say numbers equal to a new array down here using const. I'll save it, try again. We get the error, right? But we can do it with let, okay? Just like this. Because reality is, like I said, you know, this array is being modified. You've got methods being called on it to add things, delete things, and so on. You're not actually reassigning the variable, which is what the let versus const thing is. So that misconception, make sure uh, you, uh, uh, that you use const for your arrays and objects um, as opposed to using let. Okay, following on closely from the previous uh, common mistake on let versus const, this one here deals with object references, all right? So, hey, just gonna pause here, guys. I'm sorry, but I forgot to mention in this segment that um, this logic also applies to arrays and not just objects. So please keep that in mind. Let me show you a scenario. I'm gonna declare a new constant called uh, a equal to an object, and this object here is gonna represent a person. I can say name is Dom, I can give myself an age of 55, and an occupation of a software developer, all right? So I've got this simple object here for a person myself. Now, let's hop down here. I'm gonna say const A is equal, or oh, my, my mistake, const B is equal to A. So now, B is also going to be this object or this person. If I was to console.log A, then I console.log B, okay, save this, go back in the browser here, refresh, we get two objects here, the first object and the second object. Well, that's what it looks like, but the actual reality is this is a single object. So when I declare this object up here, this has created a single object in this script. When I assign B equal to A, this just means that B is a reference to the object here that A is also a reference to. So B and A are both the same ways of referring to this particular object. The, uh, that detail is important because if I was to go down here and if I was to say B.name is now equal to uh, Josh, okay, because there's only, there's only a single object, this name is this is reflected in both A and B. So if I go back in the browser here, refresh, A has Josh and B has Josh. So you can see their single reference, okay? So that's what you're doing, right? Uh, you know, because in most situations you might expect or you know, new, newer developers might expect, uh, you know, that to be a copy. So you're copying the object, but the reality is you're just uh, making a new reference to the same object. Now, in most situations, you want to avoid copying objects, especially large objects. But if there is a situation where you need to copy an object, you've got two ways of sort of two main ways of doing this. You can make a shallow copy or a deep copy. Now the shallow copy is gonna work for most scenarios and it just means that anything at the top level with simple values is gonna be copied. So this object here is a perfect candidate for a shallow copy, okay? Because they're just simple values, string, number, string. If you have properties uh, whose values are things like arrays or nested objects, or you've got multi-level objects, then you require a deep copy in order to achieve that. Let me show you quickly how to do a shallow copy using JavaScript. You can use something called object.assign. So let's change this B to instead be object.assign, then pass in an empty object. 
So now we're creating a new object right here, okay? This object is gonna be the value of B. Then I'll say A, second argument. Now it's gonna take all of A's properties and copy them into this one here, which is of course gonna be B. So now if I save this, go back in the browser, refresh, you get Dom for the first one and Josh for the second one, because this time, this time you actually got two objects here. You got object one and object two. So you're creating two objects in this scenario, but the previous scenario, like I said, you've only got the single object. I am gonna leave you a link down below in the top right as well uh, for more resources on copying objects using JavaScript. Okay, this next one here is more of a code cleanliness mistake as opposed to a practical problem, right? So this one refers to unnecessary else statements because you know you should always strive to make your code as clean as possible, especially when working in a team of other developers. So let me show you an example, okay? I'm gonna declare a function here called is greater than five. Now, this function is of course very specific Probably not very useful, but it's just an example. So it's gonna take in a number. Now it's gonna return true, this function, right? It's gonna return true if this number is greater than five and false if it is not greater than five. So I'm gonna say here, look, if n is greater than five, then return true. Else I'm gonna say return false. This makes sense. Now, if you've been using JavaScript for a while, you will know there's basically two ways you can make this uh, a little bit easier to read, less lines of code and so on. I'm gonna just go, I'm gonna go down here. I'm gonna say console.log. I'm gonna test this function actually works. I'll say is greater than five, I'll say four, okay? We should see false in the console. Go in the browser, refresh, and we get false, perfect. But now let's remove the requirement for this else statement. It's very easy, okay? As we know, when you return, this return's going to cut the execution of the function. It's gonna stop right here. This means this else is basically redundant, okay? Because if this top condition does not pass, you won't even reach the return, which means your function is always going to run. With this information, we can just say, look, let's cut this else out and just go down here a few lines down and say return false. So basically, with this sort of logic, return false is like the default behavior of the function, right? It's like the, the catch-all at the end. But these conditions are going to change the output of that function. For example, if it's more than five, return true. Let's save this, go back in the browser, refresh, and the code still works. So you can see here, you are reducing the lines of code, the amount of characters, and probably more importantly, the levels of indentation. You now only have, you got one indentation here as opposed to having two previously. And of course, you know, the more indentation you have, arguably, the harder it is to read your code. Now, you might be thinking, Dom, why don't you just do return n is greater than five? And you are correct with doing this. You can, of course, do this for this scenario because this is gonna be true or false and you get the same result. The thing is though, this is just a trivial example. So you're gonna get, you know, you might have much more complex uh, logic to include and an inline sort of, uh, you know, return like this might not be suitable. So um, this is more for when you have more complex logic in your function and so on. You got default behavior down here. You might do more things in between. So. The main sort of point here is that you can avoid that else by simply returning at the end and of course having your conditions at the top. Okay, this last one refers to the practical applications of triple equals versus double equals. Now, I'm sure most of you guys know uh, the difference between those two. Of course, double equals does not consider the type. It's very loose and forgiving when it comes to comparison, but triple equals uh, cares about the type. For example, a number of two is not equal to a string of two, for an example. So, uh, you know, like I said, we're gonna see the practical applications of using triple equals over double equals. So 
I've got this input field right here, which uh, allows you to enter in a number of players for a game. You might say four players in your game, okay? So we're gonna be grabbing that value using JavaScript and then doing a comparison. So let's go inside the code right here. It's the HTML. I'm using main.js and of course the defer attribute because I wanna access this input field. Inside the code itself or the JavaScript, I'm getting a reference to the player count input field. And I hop down here and I can say player count .add event listener. When the user changes or you know applies input to that input field, I'm going to fire off this listener. So we're going to say look, okay? When that value changes, I'm going to console.log player count, which of course is the input field itself then say dot value. So getting the value out of that input field. I'll save this, go back in the browser, refresh. I'll say four and unfocus or blur. And you get four right here. I've changed that value. Now let's try this. I'm going to say, look, okay, cool. If player count dot value is equal to four, then I can say alert. This is correct. Okay. As an example, right? I'll save this, go back in the browser, refresh, enter in four, and nothing happens. So I expected here that I get the alert, which says, you know, this is correct. It doesn't work because triple equals was used. You need to remember that for HTML attributes, uh, things like the value or a, like I said, attribute value and so on, those things are actually strings. They're all strings that need to be converted to a number or compared as if they were strings. So I could fix this by using double equals or I could say, look, okay, use a string of four. Save this, go back in the browser, refresh, say four, bang, I get the alert. Okay, let's put it back to a number. Okay, then say double equals, try again, refresh, four, and it works. So the preferred technique in my view is to use triple equals always and use the correct type for comparison. So using a string here, but I do understand why this might not be uh, always sort of uh, the best look when it comes to the code, right? Because you expect four to be a number. You might even, you might even ask the question a few months later, looking back in your code, why did I use a four with a string instead of a number? So what you can do there, of course, is parse the value as an integer first uh, before comparison. One other scenario where I found this to be a problem is when you're receiving data from an API or your backend. You might make an Ajax request or fetch request to get some data and the data comes back as a string. Then you use the same thing here, triple equals to assign or, you know, sorry, uh, compare the value. And, you know, it might work at first because it's a certain type or the types match, but then down the line, someone changes the backend code to return a number instead. And there's a bug because it can't compare it. So just be wary of these things before you attempt to compare with triple equals, make sure you parse it as an integer first, um, you know, or just make sure you're comparing the same type. And that is all for today's video. Hope you guys learned something. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you're interested, I am now uh, creating courses on Udemy. You can find my most recent course, the JavaScript DOM crash course, linked down below. Perfect for beginner to intermediate JavaScript developers. And I'll see you in the next video.